Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Alias Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the Storm Collectibles 2021 Event Exclusive Golden Axe Deathbringer. A lot of you asked me to get a villain reviewed since I reviewed the three main heroes, and I figured we might as well do the main villain, the ultimate bad guy. Death Adder wasn't the final boss, unless you played like an earlier version of the game, I believe in the arcade he was, but on the, I think, Sega Genesis version? I can't remember now specifically. There was a final boss, which was Deathbringer. He was the boss of Death Adder. And so we had to review this one, the final boss. It's just the way I do things. And so we're gonna do that. It has some really interesting features and then there are some problems and some good things. So there's gonna be some stuff to talk about. So let's go ahead and get it off the stand and take a closer look. This guy stands to the top of his helmet about 26.25 centimeters to the top of his head. Not that you would ever take his helmet off, but for scaling purposes, about, let's just say a little over 25 centimeters. And let's go ahead and do a, an inch measurement for all my American dudes. It's about 10 and a quarter inches, roughly to the top of the hat. And that's gonna be eh, about nine and three quarters to the top of the head, roughly. Now I have to point out, I did slide his head up on the ball peg a little bit because uh, in true Storm fashion, he has very little neck, which is fine based on the original artwork, original game design, and you might like the way that looks. I prefer his head to have a little bit more clearance. So I did, like I said in my other review, um, we're just gonna get into this part right now. The uh, sockets on the heads are just open cylinders. There's not an actual ball, there's no socket. It's just an open cylinder, so you can, seat it as low as you want or as high as you want. And that does give you a little bit of extra height and range for this guy. That's what I did. Okay, so let's do a quick question of the day. Were you aware of Deathbringer in his green and purple glory or did you think Death Adder was the main bad guy? I wanna get Death Adder also, but I don't think I'm gonna bother because I just, they're, it's gonna be two of the exact same figure in different colors and since this is the true bad guy, I'm just gonna stick with this one, I think. But you guys can let me know if you were aware of the two and if you're buying both or whatever the case may be. So just a reminder, if you are into Storm collectibles, they are exclusively sold through Big Bad Toy Store online in the US. They are the distributor now and exclusive retailer of all Storm collectibles. That's where I got this guy. And I love Big Bad Toy Store. I always have. I've been supporting them since I started reviewing. I've been buying from them long before that. And uh, they are my go-to place. And there's a link in the description. And if you use my link, I will get some sort of credit for that. It's not like a direct commission thing, but just to let you know. Okay, so this figure looks great. As you can see, there aren't really any joints showing. And that's because he's got this kind of weird PVC. It feels like PVC and not silicone. So it's kind of strange. Like it's definitely not silicone as far as I can tell. I think it's just like a really, really soft, maybe like a 70, a shore 70. 70A PVC, I think. I don't know for sure. It's a very soft body. Um, so his articulation is different. If you look, we'll do a size comparison real quick too. He's humongous, he's a big boy, but he's got all kinds of seams on this one and on this one, none. And here he is up against Darwin, just in case anybody's curious. He's a huge figure. So yeah, it looks great. I do wish the pecs stuck out a little bit more. He's got kind of like a strong man build rather than like a classic big pecs sort of look, but it's still a good look for sure. And the sculpt work is very nice. It's very organic looking throughout. I like it a whole bunch. So yeah, I like I like the look. It's an accurate representation and it's just gonna come down to how it functions and the longevity, which we'll talk about as we go forward. So yeah, I'm very, very pleased with the aesthetic. I love the way they did just the black face, even though it's a full on face in there, you can really just see the eyes and that's a cool look. And I like the silver dry brush and the black wash on the armor. Little bit of shading throughout the green on the skin, especially at the nipples. And it's a good looking figure. Very, very pleased with it. It's definitely gonna look nice up against my other Golden Axe figure. So I'm gonna give the aesthetic a nine out of 10. There's not a lot they could have done better. Very pleased with it. Well proportioned figure, great sculpt, love it. As far as the accessories go, we do have the alternate head with the open mouth and angry eyes. I don't like seeing the mouth in there. So that's me personally, but if you want it, you have that option, so that's cool. We have the two fist hands that come on them in the package. Then we get two gripping hands, two kind of clenchy hands, and then two wide open hands. That's fine. And then we get his green axe with the silver shading on there and a little bit of dry brushing throughout. Um, interesting note, unless my memory is losing, 
unless my memory is losing, unless I'm losing my memory, there's no golden X in the first golden X game. The X's are just the color of the main villain's skin. So Death Adder had a tan X and Deathbringer had a green one. I don't think it's until, at least I know in Golden X 3, there's definitely an actual golden X. That was, was that Return of Death? Anyway, side note. Okay, so accessory wise, um, seven out of 10, nine out of 10. I don't know, like he doesn't need anything else. So I guess that's fine. That's pretty good, right? I can't think of anything else. Nine out of 10, sure. All right, let's talk about the articulation. We're gonna take the helmet off because it's in the way. But yeah, I told you the head can slide up and down so it moves around on that ball peg nicely. But also he does have the, the peg that goes down into the body still. So you can move, you can move the peg around and it'll make the neck lean. So you can do that if you want to, side to side, front to back, that's all fine. These guys are relatively soft and they connect in the back so they get out of the way a little bit too, so that's okay. Shoulder, it's still on a ball peg, it moves around like a normal shoulder would, like that. Um, but then you get you get a bicep swivel up in the shoulder, which is really strange for a figure. I haven't seen that before, but that's because this is all one piece of hollow plastic. So you get your bicep swivel up there, and you get your range, so that seems to be enough. Like, these get in the way, obviously, some. There's nothing you can do about that. But it seems to be enough range that however they did that, you're gonna be able to pose this guy pretty well at the shoulder. Bicep swivel is obviously somewhat limited because the whole shoulder has to rotate with it, but it's okay. Now, I am concerned about the elbows, elbows and knees specifically, because that's what tends to break on a figure that has this kind of oversuit of skin. And so we're gonna mess around with it and see right now. Um, when I first got this, it's cold here in Ohio, and I couldn't pose it at all. <laughs> Which you shouldn't do anyway, because you'll break stuff, but I was messing with it. But now that it's warm, you can get a decent bend. I see some stress maybe back here, and it definitely doesn't look great from the side. But you do get a decent bend out of that elbow, and it actually makes the bicep look like a natural bicep, the way it scrunches. So that's a cool feature. I like that. Um, I am concerned about the back of the elbow splitting. So for me, I'm not gonna pose this guy anything crazy and leave him that way for a long period of time. Um, I'm very concerned about the back of the elbow just splitting from the stress. It's a thin enough, soft enough plastic that that could happen. So be aware of that, but you can get decent range out of it. If you're just gonna do it for a photo and then leave it, or put it back and then leave it, you should be fine. But be aware, soft plastic can tear. Uh, it is soft all the way through here, so the wrist actually is on a ball peg. So you have the ball hinge as standard range, and then you get a ball peg in here to actually give yourself just a little bit extra if you want. I don't know that you'll actually need that, but you can. And so the hands have decent, actually better than average range. So I like that. The hinges are a little stiff though, so be careful. In the torso, there is, there is articulation, but he's too stiff. His skin is just too stiff for it to actually do much. You can just kind of adjust how much curve there is to his muscles, just a little bit. Push him forward and he's got a little bit more of a flat chest, flat torso. So that's about it for up here. Um, technically it can lean, but you're not gonna really get anything out of this upper torso. You do get this, which doesn't have a ton of range. It leans forward and back some, side to side some, and gets a rotation. And that's, that's probably it. His belt is floaty. I like to keep it a little bit lower to make him look a little bit leaner, and that works nicely. But that is a floaty piece. And the hips are standard storm hips, it looks like. So they should be able to go pretty far forward. Yeah, not quite all the way, but far enough. And going back, they do go back, so you can, you can get him going a little bit. Not a ton, he's got some pretty chunky thighs and a low torso, but they do work. Going out to the side, yeah, it's gonna hold him right about there. So less than 45, he's not the most uh, well articulated figure. He's not supposed to be, and I think I'm okay with that, but I do have to show you guys the, the limitations. So that's fine. Thigh swivel is a wonderful thigh swivel. Now, the legs are just like the arms. It's one solid over piece with a joint underneath. You can probably force it more than that. It takes a lot of force because they need to be strong enough joints to hold against this plastic on the outside. It's pretty stiff though, and I'm afraid I'm gonna tear this. Yeah, I'm not gonna go any farther than that. It doesn't even look good at the knee at that point. 
Um, maybe you can hide it with the armor a little bit. But yeah, it, I don't like these bodies. Anytime they ever do it, Hot Toys, this brand, any brand, uh, Bandai did it, any brand that uses plastic over a skeleton that flexes, I don't like that at all. So it's technically doable to bend the knee, but I wouldn't recommend doing it too much. I would say pose him just a little bit and make him look intimidating and that's cool. It's not like he was running around doing flying kicks or anything in the game, so I'm fine with that. And I guess it, it's a trade-off. You do get a seamless figure, more or less. So that's a good thing, but if you don't want it to be seamless, then you are limited in posability. The ankles are your standard Storm ankles. They're not as stiff as they could be, but they're okay. Pretty limited range, ankle rocker. I don't like that the green shows through at the bottom either. You can kind of kind of try to get this to hide it, but it's going to show a little bit. Toe hinge is super floppy and worthless. So yeah, his articulation is definitely not his strong suit, but does it really matter? On this guy, to me, it doesn't matter as much because he looks pretty cool and you can pose him enough to look like a badass on the shelf and that's fine, but still his articulation blows. So I'm gonna give the articulation rating only a three out of 10. I'm afraid it's gonna ruin the, the outer layer and you can't pose it that well to begin with. So definitely not good for posing, but it's gonna look wonderful on the shelf and I'll have some photos at the end in basic poses that I feel comfortable leaving him in and you'll see it does look great. So you have to decide for yourself if it's worth it or not. That's what these reviews are for. I give you information, you decide what you care about. But yeah, his articulation sucks, the aesthetic is really nice and um, the accessories are solid. So I'm gonna give it an overall rating of eight out of 10, leaning heavily away from posing uh, just because this guy doesn't really need it and the aesthetic makes up for it. But you could easily argue that it should be more poseable. I would definitely prefer he just had articulation like this. And maybe it would have cost too much because he's humongous, so that's why they did this. I don't know. But I always want more art articulation, but I think it's reasonable on this one. That's what I'm getting at, I guess. So you guys can let me know what you think about that in the comment section below. But there it is. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. And if you haven't subscribed, you might want to. I have new videos almost every single day and thousands already on the channel. So make sure you come back for all of that. And in the meantime, keep collecting.